Royal Caribbean and Norwegian have released a document outlining their recommendations on what cruise will look like. Instead of making you read the full 66 pages, we've put all of the important information into a quick 10 minute video of what cruising will look like. And some of it's surprising. Well, ahoy okay. there, cruisers. We're Cruise with Ben and David. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe right now to keep up to date with Cruise. The report filed to the CDC today from the Healthy Sail Panel includes 74 detailed best practices to protect the public health and safety of guests and communities where the cruise ships do call. The main aim of the report is to lead to a healthy return of service and the preservation of human life. Once again, we state that we think cruising is the safest form of travel and always has been. So let's break this up into the five different sections. Number one is testing, screening, and exposure reduction. So this will involve taking aggressive measures to prevent COVID from entering the ship in the first place. This will be achieved through robust education, screening, and testing of both crew and guests prior to embarkation. The document states that passengers should be tested between 5 days and 24 hours before boarding and receive a negative result that is shared with the cruise operator before coming on board. So yeah, this is interesting. It sounds like it's going to be done at your own cost and time before even departing your home and arriving at the embarkation port. It's going to be a difficult hurdle depending on whether tests are easily accessible to you and obviously the cost involved as well. The panel emphasises that a single test at the point of embarkation, such as what companies like MSC and Costa are doing, is not a substitute for an initial test performed before a guest departs their home location. So this really goes against what MSC and Costa are doing because they just test at port. Yeah, interesting that, isn't it? And also how they're going to authenticate the test results and how you're even going to get it to the cruise line. Yeah, and what type of test have you taken? Is it just got to be a simple swab test or a PCR test or something more Yeah, and how, how are you going to harmonise that between the different countries, the different governments? Uh, it's going to be It difficult. seems like it's opened a little bit of a can of worms, this one. The report also states that they would prefer two negative tests from passengers, but they will need a minimum of one. If rapid, reliable and clinically valid testing options become widely available, the addition of a second test at the pier or immediately before boarding would be strongly considered. And this is the same for the crew on board as well. They must be tested in their home location before joining the ship, then potentially again at the port before boarding. In addition to this, they'll be required to quarantine on the ship for seven days after arriving for duty. Then another test will be carried out, and if clear, they can start their duties on board. At embarkation, all guests and crew boarding the ship will undergo a health screening to identify any symptoms consistent with COVID-19. This is going to include a contactless temperature check and anyone with concerns will undergo a secondary screening to determine whether they may board the ship or whether they'll be denied boarding. If you have had a positive test in the last 14 days or been in contact with anybody who has, you will also be denied boarding. Check-in and disembarkation will be touchless, making it quicker and less crowded in the terminals. Once on board, every crew member and guest will have their temperatures taken every day, preferably in the afternoon or late in the day when fevers are more likely to present. And during the cruise, masks will be required in accordance to CDC recommendations. So guests will be required to wear face coverings in any indoor congregate setting regardless of physical distancing measures so basically you're going to be wearing a mask at all times you'll not be required to wear a mask in your own cabin and a notable exception is obviously dining restaurants and dining rooms should provide social distancing so that you can eat and drink without the need for a mask which is physically impossible you will also not need to wear them outside when physically distancing is available. And crew members in close contact with passengers will be provided with PPE and a mask. The report also confirms that ships will have a limited capacity on board. And returning to crews will be a phased approach to prove that all these plans actually work. And social distancing is obviously going to play a large part with areas on the ship and ports adjusted to allow six feet of social distancing. This will include installing signage and floor markers around the ship and ports, with particular emphasis on high traffic areas. The second point is all about sanitation and ventilation. 
Enhanced sanitation protocols will also be employed to protect against the risk of COVID, with particular attention to both high and low touch areas, including at the terminals and private resorts and islands. Hand washing is going to play a large part with more sanitisation stations and hand washing stations installed around the ships. And crew will be more readily enforcing hand washing and sanitisation before entering any venues. Cruise lines will also be required to upgrade HVAC systems on their ships to minimise pathogen dispersal from infected guests and crew. So this is the ventilation system on board. New filters will be installed to trap the tiniest of particles. These have all been proven to be successful on airlines recently. So number three is response, contingency planning and execution. They will be implementing detailed plans to address positive infection on board, including contact contingencies for onboard treatment, isolation and rapid evacuation and repatriation. So basically they're going to want to get any infection on board off the ship as soon as possible. There'll also be better training for the medical personnel on the ship and more of them on board as well. The onboard medical centres will also have more capacity with new advanced equipment and medication to treat and diagnose COVID. And on each ship there'll be a crew member with direct responsibility for infectious disease prevention and response. Cruise operators will ensure they have a doctor on board with intensivist training to manage the medical care of severely ill patients. This basically means a doctor qualified and experienced in ICU care. Appointments with medical staff will be done virtually or in the passenger's cabin to reduce risk to other passengers. There'll be strict isolation protocols and certain cabins which are not sold to allow isolation on board. Cruise lines will also need to pre-establish relationships with onshore medical facilities to allow quick transfer. And there's also going to be some type of contact tracing carried out aboard the ship. Maybe it could be similar to MSC with the app or wristbands to track passenger movements. Obviously as well, there'll be detailed protocols and contingency plans for breakouts on board. If there are cases at the debarkation stage, cruise lines will be required to have a response plan and work with local authorities and medical professionals on advice on what action to take next. So number four is destination and excursion planning. So shorter length cruises should be carried out at the return to service and cruise itineraries should be as simple as possible, utilising private cruise line owned and operated destinations or ports where there can be a tight control of the onshore experience. So this means just expect some cruises to be doing private cruise resorts and islands, something we said that would happen at the beginning of the breakout. And it's so much easier for cruise lines to prevent transmission. Employees in these private resorts will all be tested and monitored daily to reduce risk. And like MSC guests debarking from a ship at ports during cruises, you will have to book a cruise line sponsored or verified excursion as a way of limiting potential exposures in the destinations so you're not going to be allowed to get off the ship on your own and self-explore you must book an approved excursion masks must be worn and physical distancing must be possible during the excursion all transportation and staff conducting the excursions will be tested and coaches thoroughly cleaned so number five is mitigating risks for crew members as well as some of the stuff we've already mentioned you're going to see things like managing the population density of the crew areas on the ship this is going to basically mean less crew on board which makes sense with less passengers and where possible they should not share a cabin either so they should all be given their own individual cabin and crew members should be allowed to disembark at ports which is really good news for them just to get fresh air and things and there'll be protocols in place to reduce the risk of them, of them becoming infected. One screening protocol that could be considered is retesting 10% of the crew every week and oversampling the crew with high touch, high exposure jobs. There's also going to be extensive training for the crew. So that's just about it. What's next? Well, the CDC need to approve these measures and protocols. We don't know how long that's going to take. We just really don't know. But the current no sale order by the CDC is due to cease in nine days time. Will we see that further lengthened or will it be removed due to these changes? Could cruising be back a lot sooner than we really think? Who it knows? What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below. We could see a few select ships coming back, maybe. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. 
So that's it for this episode. We really do hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. It really helps us out. And we've got so much fun content on the way. Thank you so much for our patrons for supporting us. You can find out more by clicking the link in the description section below. The cruise captain this week is Nobby. So ahoy! Ahoy there, Nobby. That's it till next time. Happy Happy cruising. cruising!